Hello and welcome to Master Sitecore. My name is Martina and in this video I'm going to show you everything that I know about data sources. This is a video for developers, so I'm going to show you how to force a component to use a data source, how to improve usability, and talk about why data sources are important when you are building for Sitecore. Let's start by looking at the end results for the users. So here I am in the Dogs Alive test site, uh, and I'm going to enable designing. Now we're on the home page, uh, and home pages are a funny beast because they have content from all over the place. So we are surfacing a banner here, but that might change depending on who's visiting. Uh, and we have a number of content blocks um, that surface content from elsewhere in the site. Now, if you look at the actual home page item, we're not going to have things like banner text and title, component one title, component two title. This content is coming from other places in the content tree. Just to show you that, I'll click edit on the home item. And you can see we have precious little content defined on this actual item. So everything is coming from elsewhere in the tree. Let's close that. Now, if we select one of these components, uh, where the content author or content editor defines where the content comes from is by clicking this little set associated content button. If I click on that, I get this dialog here and I can choose which promotion, which is a global item, not a page item, to pull content from. If I choose something else, like spread the word, I get different content. One of the cool things about this particular setup is that if I couldn't find a bit of content that I need here, so in this list of items, I can create something brand new. If I click that button, call it something, it'll create that item in the background and you just fill in the text here in the experience editor as you would normally. And now that item is available for reuse somewhere else. It's important to note that you don't have to have a global item as a data source. Um, you can have any item at all as a data source. You can have a page item as a data source or one of these global items here. So I'll just show you the tree so you can see what these are. And I've made the decision to create promotions as separate items because they aren't part of a page. Here we go. Here are the promotion items. I also have banner items that act as data sources, but you might have a featured pet component that pulls in a data source from actually in the tree and that puts that content. And that's actually what we're going to do in this demo. So we're going to create a featured pet component that pulls its data source from a pet item. So a page item rather than something global, because we've already seen that working. So let's head into Visual Studio and look at the project. You can see that this is the promotion component that output a data source. We're going to create a brand new one. We're going to create a pet promotion. Let's start with new item and go to MVC under the Sitecore menu. We can actually create a view rendering this way. I'm going to call it pet promotion. It's going to prompt me to create a view rendering under here. There we go. And it gives me a little bit of starting stuff. I'm going to copy some of the HTML because I'm lazy. Okay. So we want to be able to choose a pet from the website to feature or on other pages, on the home page or in the right hand column of other pages. Um, so let's have a look at what fields we have available on Spot, which is a pet page template. So we've got a heading. We might as well reuse that in our um, featured pet component. We've also got page content. Now, the risk is that page content is going to be really, really long. So we probably don't want to output that content in a little promotion, but we might want to use the page summary field down here because that text is likely to be much shorter. 
Now you could go to extremes and create a promotion summary field on this data template. So you can be sure that any text you put in there is the one that's featured on the promotion and you might want to put validation on it. But I'm going to assume that page summary will be okay for now. You may end up having three separate rich text fields to describe this pet. Um, but if it's in different contexts and if that's what the UX and, and content strategy calls for, then that's what you do. So I want to output page summary and page heading when I pick spot as a data source. So it's going to be an H2. Okay. So to output content, we use the Sitecore field helper, which is that. And the name of the field, the heading field was page heading. Now, to, to force that to come from the data source rather than the context item, we need to add an additional parameter. So if I just leave it like this, um, whatever page this component is placed on, Cycle will look for page heading on that context item. So if it's on the home page, it'll output home. If it's on the elderly pets page, it'll output elderly pets. But I want it to come from the data source. Uh, so I use model, which is the rendering model up here. Uh, and I want item. Now item will either return the data source or default back to the page item, which is that one. I'm going to do the same for the page summary. And I wanted to pull from the data source item. I'm going to build that and because I'm using TDS, it'll auto copy everything over for me as a last step. So let's go and have a look at the experience editor now. Okay. And actually to differentiate my component from promotion, I'm going to cheat a little bit and give it a different background color. That'll do. Build again. So you can see how it's a bit different visually and back to the experience editor. So I want to be able to add this featured pet promotion in, in this list. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is to make it available uh, in the promotions row placeholder. So let me just do that. Here's my placeholder uh, and I can manage the settings here. You could do this in the content tree as well. And I'm just going to add my control as one of the available controls is this one here pet promotion okay okay again and then add to here and here's my pet promotion now as you can see there is no text here uh, and if we have a look at the home item actually let's go edit it in the content editor so you can see there is nothing specified in the title or text field on the home item either. So that's why no content's coming through. But if we edit that, let's just put in some test content. Save and close. You'll see that because we haven't specified a data source and those fields in this component um, are available on the home item, that's what it's outputting. But we can click this set associated content button and choose a pet instead. Now there's nothing stopping us from choosing any item whatsoever because we haven't set up any restrictions. So I could choose the entire pet section, for instance, because I know that's got a page heading and page text but I want to choose a dog and the content will now come from spot. And I, because I've chosen page summary, I get slightly less text there. And that's how you get a component to listen to a data source. And why is this important? Well, you don't want to duplicate content. So I want to specify spot once, have all the information about spot in one place, and then reuse that elsewhere on the site. So you're reducing duplication and making things a lot more flexible. So if I wanted to add 16 of these components on the page, I'm not relying on a developer to add those fields directly to the home template. 
Other features that are supported by the use of data sources are personalization and testing. So I can click this personalize button. Uh, and if someone has indicated that they are only interested in cats, for instance, and that information is available in the XDB, I can change the data source. So let's do that actually. Here we go. We've got a social one, so where the current contact is inter interested in blah on the current social network. Probably a little bit of a poor example, but let's say cats was there. Um, we can say where somebody on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that actually prefers cats to dogs, um, change, oh, uh, change the source of this component, so that's what this personalized content thing is, to a cat instead or, or something else. So I can completely change, and I know this isn't a cat, uh, the content, and you can see now I have two personalization rules here. And you, I mean, these can be endless. So the content presented to you as a visitor is relevant to your interests. And all that's made possible from a developer's point of view by using data sources. If this was static content uh, that came from the home item, you wouldn't be able to do that. Testing, so in PsychoA, testing is slightly different. Every time a content editor saves something, um, a test is fired up. So if I made the change, say I changed volunteer to give us your time, for instance, I can test whether that change has been successful. Uh, and all that is done with data sources. So because I'm able to vary the data source, I'm able to test two permutations of this component. So as you're going through your designs and chopping them up, you should always be asking yourself, does this particular part of the page need to come from a data source? And you may be surprised what components do need a data source. This, for example, UX might decide that this little sentence is quite important and that it's uh, integral in driving people towards inter uh, interacting with my site. So they might want to be able to test that or personalize that even. And then it's got to have a data source. So make sure you give a lot of thought to whether something should come from a data source or not. The last thing I'm going to show you is to how to make the data sources a little bit more user friendly. So we saw here that when we picked a data source, we could pick absolutely anything in the tree. And this create new content is grayed out. Um, and that's because we haven't told Sitecore the location of these items. And we haven't told Sitecore what data template you should be allowed to choose. Um, and to set up those restrictions, I'm just going to set up a, a location restriction at the moment because I don't want them to be able to create pet pages on the fly like that. Uh, but to set up those restrictions, we go to the definition item of that component. So if I double click, I'm back in Cycle Rocks now, double click pet promotion. There are two fields called data source location and data source template. And here they are. Now here you can say, this is the route where you are allowed to look for data sources. And here you can say, you may only choose data sources of this type. So let's do data source location. I'm going to right click on home, clipboard, copy item ID, paste that in there and save. And now if we try to set a data source, we will be limited to everything under home. We still can't create new content though. If we wanted to enable that, I'll show you how to do it. Back to Cycle Rocks. We just have to specify a template. So I only want you to be able to choose things of type pet, clipboard, copy item ID, paste that in. And if we try to choose a data source now, it's you see it says it's not a valid selection because it's the wrong type. Wrong type, wrong type, wrong type. So I can only choose that one. And I could create new content, so we can do that for fun. You can choose where to put it. Let's call this Bob, which is fine. Um, but then we've created a brand new page that it's only going to have a title and summary. So you might not want to do that in this particular case. I'll navigate to that page just to show you. So let's save that. and head on over to the dog section. And 
and you'll see a created Bob there. But even if we put a title and some content in, it's not going to have much going on. So you might want to think about, should they be able to create new content or is this content a page? Uh, and I don't want to, but you have the option. And that is the basics of data sources in Sitecore. So I lied slightly, that's not everything I know about data sources, but it's enough to get you started um, and to hopefully encourage you to make use of data source components as much as possible in your implementation. Thank you for watching.